Let's now turn to extraction concepts and techniques. We won't go into extreme detail here because the Simple and Surgical Extraction course, uh, the webinar that's five hours, goes over each individual tooth in detail and talks about all the tips and tricks involved with that. But we will mention basic approach to extraction in several teeth in, in the dog and um, leave the, the extreme details up to uh, the course on simple and surgical extractions. But in order to talk about extractions, we need to talk about technique initially, whether it be simple or surgical. Um, one, of the, one of the main things that we need to keep in mind when we're extracting teeth is any instrument that we use, in this particular case a scalpel, we have our fingers not only at the edge of the instrument or close to the end of the instrument uh, that we're working with, but also positioned adjacent to tooth or tissue. And you can see I'm, I'm making an incision here, but I have my finger adjacent to this tooth, I have it adjacent to the instrument, I have it adjacent to the palatal mucosa and this incisor. And consequently, I have total control over this over the scalpel. I can use my finger and my, my forefinger and my thumb just to make small little stab incisions into this gum tissue uh, to advance that scalpel apically to the level of the bone. So if I'm making a flap, uh, no matter where it is, I'm going to use little stab incisions so that I have complete control and I don't end up going through the attached gingiva as I'm trying to create that flap. When we do our vertical releasing incisions, as we will show shortly, we can do a, a spay-like incision where we do a continual pressure and uh, a continuous pass of that scalpel, but when we're working on the sulcus, when we're working on the gingival margin, trying to release our tissue here, we want to make little stab incisions. Same thing here. Now we've got the luxator or elevator, and the luxators and elevators have kind of melded into the same instrument over the years. Uh, we used to have really thick elevators and really thin luxators. The luxators, if we tried to put any torque pressure on, would just bend. And now with better materials, we have what manufacturers might call luxators, or they might call them elevators, but they're basically the same thing. Uh, they can be used for both. So the luxator function of these instruments um, is used to place torque on the tooth. Or I'm sorry, is you, uh, the luxator uh, portion of these instruments is used to create a purchase between the tooth and the bone in the periodontal ligament space in order to gain traction so that when we use the elevator function of these, we can torque that instrument so that it places pressure on the tooth, pressure on the bone to expand that periodontal ligament space and start to cause some movement of the bone in the tooth uh, adjacent to it. And again, we, we, we don't want to extend this beyond our area of purchase. And so that's why we have our fingers here to prevent accidental apical migration quickly and, and uh, damage to the patient uh, tissue and possibly if our hands up here uh, to stabilize that upper uh, jaw damage our own hand as well. So it's, it's, it's a good idea to have a piece of gauze up here regardless, even though you're using this technique, so you have a little bit of a buffer between the blade and your gloved hand. Now, when we place this instrument into that space between the bone and the tooth, what we want to do is use that wiggle motion uh, to do so, and we'll show, we'll show that in the video here shortly. And that's fine to get purchase in between that tooth and the bone. But once we're there, we don't want to wiggle that 
luxator elevator back and forth. We want to torque it and hold it with firm pressure, often progressive pressure, as we feel that tooth give uh, way a little bit against the bone and not start on another area until that 15 seconds has been, has been satisfied. These are really nice luxators slash elevators. These are uh, the short handled luxator elevator that fit right into the palm of the hand. And consequently, the finger extension up to the tip is, is quite natural with this just because it's shorter. It allows you not to have to use a lot of grip pressure on the handle portion and ergonomically allows that to sit in the palm of the hand. And so any forward pressure or apical pressure is, doesn't require you squeezing the instrument because it rests at the base of the palm of your hand. And so you can use that to your advantage from a, from a physics standpoint. So once the tooth is relatively mobile, several, several uh, millimeters, depending on the tooth, or uh, maybe a millimeter or less, uh, depending on the size of the tooth. Again, the smaller the tooth, the less the movement. <clears throat> then um, you want to use your extraction forces on the crown to complete the extraction. If you torque that tooth too much with the extraction forces, you run the risk of fracturing using the same technique that you would to open a wine bottle where the cork is engaged and you're using mostly pull pressure on that corkscrew and very little torque pressure. Otherwise, you would have a tendency to tear the cork. So same thing with the tooth. You want to utilize mostly pull with a little bit of torque pressure in order to complete that extraction with those extraction forces without causing fracture of that.